Fatima Bhutto's debut novel, The Shadow of the Crescent Moon, delves into the intricate web of Pakistani politics, drawing from the author's personal background as a descendant of the influential Bhutto family. Set in 2007 in the fictional town of Mir Ali within the federally administered tribal areas, Fada, the narrative unfolds against the backdrop of escalating violence along the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. The story revolves around three brothers and their romantic entanglements, offering a glimpse into the complexities of life amidst war and unrest. Against the backdrop of Eid, a significant Islamic holiday, the brothers navigate the precarious landscape of Mir Ali, where the threat of bombings looms over their prayers. At the heart of the tale is Aman Iram, the eldest brother, who harbors ambitions beyond the confines of Mir Ali, fueled by his recent return from studying in America. His father, Inayath Masud, once championed the cause of regional independence, advocating for Mir Ali's secession from Pakistan to join Afghanistan. Aman Iram's involvement in this struggle intertwines with his relationship with Samara, a passionate advocate for independence. As the narrative unfolds, Bhutto skillfully explores the multifaceted dimensions of political strife, terrorism, and sectarian tensions that grip the region. Through shifting perspectives and intimate portrayals, the shadow of the crescent moon offers a poignant reflection on the human cost of conflict in the borderlands of Pakistan. As Aman Iram grew up, he realized that he and his dreams would never fit into the provincial life he saw around him. Meanwhile, Samara, already a taboo-breaking teenage girl whose father taught her to ride a motorbike and shoot a gun, felt an increasing sense of urgency to free Mir Ali. The middle brother is Sikandar, a doctor who had the choice of going abroad but instead chooses to practice medicine in the town's rundown and underfunded hospital, where the only available medicines are expired antibiotics and vaccines. He is married to the depressed Mina. She was a psychologist in the same hospital as her husband, but now spends her days attending the funerals of children she doesn't know. Sikandar and Mina had a young son, Zalan, who was killed by a terrorist attack on the hospital. Unable to come to terms with what happened, Mina uses the funerals as a way of finding her own son while she prays, recites poem, and bathes the dead. The youngest brother is idealistic and headstrong Hayat who has picked up his father's cause of fighting for independence. Hayat has now become involved with Samara, and together they are part of the Mir Ali insurgent movement. However, Hayat's connection to the freedom fighters, or terrorists, is not as strong as Samara's. Samara is an up-and-coming leader, and she is fueled not by simple idealism, but by rage and the need for vengeance. When she was younger, she was raped by soldiers from the Pakistani army, since none of her attackers were punished, she is determined to be the one who punishes them. After breakfast, Aman Iram takes a taxi to a mosque, Sikandar decides to check on the situation at the hospital, and Hayat rides off toward town on his motorbike. However, none of them are really doing what they said they would. Aman Iram is increasingly desperate to find a way to leave Mir Ali for good, and Sikandar goes off to find Mina. Meanwhile, Hayat isn't traveling alone. On their journey, he is joined by Samara, and together they set out to assassinate the chief minister. Despite attempting to travel discreetly, Aman Iram observes Samara boarding Hayat's motorcycle and deduces their plan for an attack. The narrative concludes with significant ambiguity surrounding the outcome. The assassination occurs, yet it remains uncertain whether the minister is truly slain or if Hayat and Samara are responsible. There are hints that Hayat may betray Samara at the last moment. Aman Iram willingly divulges his knowledge of Samara's intentions and allegiances to an intelligence officer, securing a student visa in return. Consequently, Samara is apprehended and likely subjected to indefinite military detention and torture. Mina emerges as the sole character whose storyline concludes with a glimmer of hope rather than succumbing to violence or moral decay. Amidst the chaos, during one of the funerals, Mina finds her voice and confronts Taliban members regarding the hospital attack and her son's death. While unresolved, her visible personal catharsis suggests a somewhat optimistic outlook for her future. The novel has garnered praise for Bhutto's vivid descriptions and meticulous attention to detail, but has faced widespread criticism for its heavily biased portrayal of the Pakistani army. Bhutto portrays the army in the darkest light possible while offering the Taliban the benefit of the doubt and depicting life under their rule as affording women numerous choices rather than imposing rigid and uncompromising regulations. Critics also note the novel's failure to entertain the possibility of flaws in Samara's actions, consistently portraying her as a heroic freedom fighter rather than a potential terrorist.
I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.